Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pre-Kirk and Wee-Kirk with First Presbyterian Church, Smithfield, North Carolina, this Sunday, July 25th, 24th. Ooh, what Sunday is it? 25th. <laughs> Thanks to the computer. It's got it right there. I am happy to be with you this week. I was at the beach last week and our plans got a little crazy, so I wasn't able to get on like I had thought I might be able to, but I'm glad to be back with you this week. Um, we're going to pick back up, thanks to Miss Debbie, who always gives us the wonderful monthly lesson plan. So wherever you feel like stopping and starting or dropping and picking up, you know exactly what we're doing or not doing or how to work at your own pace. But I'm glad to be back with you this Sunday because the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because my friends are your friends and your friends are my friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. With my friends Nolan and Sydney and Lillian and Marley and Maggie and Daisy and Joshua and Alex and Avery and Anna and Caroline and Bella and Riley and Jasper and Kim and Brooks and Gabby and Brantley and Avery and Sylvan and Eleanor and Wyatt and Ruth and Emily and Eason and Will and Buckley and Tinsley and Daniel and Jason and Connor and anyone else who's out there joining us. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Ho, 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 Hosanna, ha, 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 hallelujah, he, 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 save me, I've got the joy of the Lord. Ho, 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 Hosanna, ha, 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 hallelujah, he, 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 save me, I've got the joy of the Lord. That's a happy song. It sounds like laughing, don't you think? We're going to talk about water today in our story, so I'm going to sing, let's sing a song about water that we haven't, uh, Song in a while. Deep and wide. Ready? You gotta make it your water deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Mm. Oh, and then the next part is you sing part of it, but not all of it. So we're gonna hum deep and sing wide. Okay, let's try it. Mm, and wide, mm, and wide, there's a fountain flowing and wide. Mm, and wide, mm, and wide, there's a fountain flowing and wide. And this time you sing it the whole way through and you don't say deep or wide. Let's try that. And, and, there's a fountain flowing and 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 there's a fountain flowing and that's a lot of fun if we, if we when we get back together in person which should happen soon should happen this fall uh, we'll sing that together in person and we'll skip words and go fast and slow and all kinds of fun stuff it'll be great to do that together again well, why are we singing a song about a fountain flowing deep and wide? Well, it's because that's what our story is about today. Our story is from the Bible. It's called The Woman at the Well. So let's read it. Make sure you can see it. There we go. The Woman at the Well. Tired from walking a long way, Jesus rested at a well in a place called Samaria. So... Right now, if we need some water to drink, or to cook, or to wash, for a lot of people, oh, there comes the eye. Oh, so sorry. For a lot of people, it comes out of the pipes in their house. You just turn the water on in the faucet, or you turn on your washing machine, or maybe a dishwasher, or a hose outside, and you've got water coming out. It's amazing. A modern miracle. When Jesus was alive and walking around and teaching and preaching on earth, they didn't have pipes that carried water to their houses, but they had a well in the town or somewhere, hopefully nearby, that had water. And it was a big hole that went way down into the ground to where there was water, fresh water, clean water. And then they would set up a bucket pulley system 
and or sometimes they just had to lean over and they would fill up giant buckets and jars of water in the morning and take it to their house and then use it during the day to wash or cook. So you can imagine it was hard work and it was usually a woman's job, sometimes a young woman's job to go get the water um, to take back to the house every day. So Jesus was sitting at a well. The well was the place that all of the people could come to get their big jars of water to take back and use at their houses. So he was been walking a long way and he was resting at a well. And he was in a place called Samaria. The disciples had gone to get food while he rested. The sun was high in the sky and whew, Jesus was hot. His tongue was dry and he was very thirsty. A Samaritan woman, someone who lived in that place where the well was, where he stopped, came to the well to get water, which was a normal thing that she probably did every day. Will you give me a drink? Jesus asked. Because Jesus probably didn't have a bucket or anything, and she did. And she gave him a puzzled look when he asked if, he, if she could give him some water. And this was because Jesus was a Jew. He was Jewish. And she knew that most Jewish people did not like the people who lived in Samaria. So most people who were like Jesus didn't want to talk to the people who lived in Samaria. Didn't want to talk to them or interact with them or anything. They treated them badly or ignored them. So she was very confused. So she asked, why are you asking me for a drink? If you knew who I was, Jesus answered, you would ask me for living water. Now the woman was really puzzled. Sir, she said as she pointed to the well, the well is deep and you don't have a jar. Where will you get this living water? Jesus smiled. Everyone who drinks from this well will be thirsty again, but the water that I bring lasts forever. What the woman didn't understand was that Jesus wasn't talking about water that you drink. He was talking about living water. Love. God's love that forgives and a life that lasts forever with God. As Jesus explained this more, the woman became more and more interested and she wanted to hear more. So Jesus told her more, lots more. Jesus knew all about her, about where she came from and what she believed. And as they talked, the woman's eyes began to twinkle. I know the Messiah is coming she said, and I've heard all about him. And then Jesus smiled and put his hand on the woman's shoulder. I am the Messiah, he said gently. The woman was so surprised that she nearly spilled her water jar. So the Messiah is what the Jewish people and other people in that time believed that somebody special was going to come and save everybody and teach everybody. And this person was from God. And she had heard that that person would come one day. And as she listened to Jesus, it sounded so special. And it was so crazy because Jesus knew about her as if they had talked before and they had never talked before. So she knew something strange or special was happening. And so she said, I've heard about a Messiah coming. And then Jesus said, that's me. I'm the Messiah. So she was very surprised by that. As the disciples came back with food, the woman rushed past them. She was so excited to tell everyone about what Jesus had said. The woman ran all over town telling people about what she had seen and heard. There's a man at the well who says he's the Messiah. He has amazing things to say. Come and see him for yourself, she said. And then the people came running to see Jesus, and then many people believed in Jesus because of what he told them that day. That's a story that's worth reading lots and lots as you grow up. Every time you read it from a different place or hear it from a different, you know, you might hear it from me, you might hear it from a time that we're reading it at church, you might hear it from Bible school or camp or somebody's Bible school. Bible study or a Bible school at somewhere, another place that you're going. And then as you grow up, read it again. This is one of those stories that as you grow up, 
you hear different things and you think about different things and you learn different things and you have different questions. And remember, having questions about stories in the Bible and thinking about those questions is really good. That's what helps your brain grow. That's what helps you learn. That's what helps you learn more about God. So today, just remember that Jesus was at a well, which is where everybody got water. And somebody came with their jar to get water. A lady came and he started talking to her about living water, which was different than the water in in the well, the water that we would drink and wash with. He was trying to teach her about God and about God's love in a way that she would understand. So since she was there to get water, he was talking about God being like water to teach her what God was like living water. God's love, God's teaching, God's messages for all of us. Being part of God's family. That's the living water. So I hope you remember that from your story and you've got some crafts to do this week to help you with that. If you are a littler kid, you've got a packet that has this coloring page on the front and lots of bulletin pages and activities in the back to show you more about the story and to help you think about the story. And if you are a bigger kid, you have a packet that looks like this on the front with a lot of word puzzles and things to help you remember the story. So, like I said, have fun with those packets. Talk to your family. Ask your mom or dad if they've ever heard this story and ask them what they think about it. And if you're big enough and you're curious, Find the story on, on your phone, on the internet, or if you've got a Bible at your house, find the story in the Bible and let someone, in, in, in you can read it, or ask somebody in your house to read you the story out of the big Bible. It'll have, diff, it'll have more information in there. It might sound a little different, and maybe it'll help you have more questions and more things to think about. But I hope you have a great week. I will be back with you next week online here, and I look forward to doing that. Let me see if I have any singers in the hallway. Anybody out there wanting to sing today? Maybe. I don't hear any footsteps, so we're going to say goodbye. So let's clap, snap, peace, peace. Clap, snap, peace, peace. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. I said goodbye. I'll see you later. I said goodbye. I'll see you later. I said goodbye and get down and get down and get down. I said goodbye. I'll see you later, alligator and freeze. High five. Have a great week.